What is the dumbest thing someone made you believe to be true that you later found out it isn't? Story 1. My dad would tell me he can make red lights turn green just by pressing the garage door opener. I didn't believe him, but every time he did it, it worked. Still didn't believe him, but I couldn't figure out how he was doing it. When I got older and learned to drive, I realized he was just looking at the other lights in the intersection to time out when to press the opener. Story 2. Not intentionally. But for a long time as a young kid, I thought women with dark eyebrows and blonde hair were robots or androids or whatever. I heard my mom and dad saying that someone on TV was fake or not real or something to that effect. When I asked why, they said her eyebrows are black and her hair is blonde. Whatever the terminology was, it was unclear to me they were talking about her hair color not being real. I just assumed it was a giveaway to know who weren't real humans. Story 3. I completely misunderstood pregnancy when I was little. When my mother was pregnant with my younger sister, she told me she had a baby living in her tummy, which I understood as stomach. I thought babies literally sat in a woman's stomach and consisted on the chewed up food the woman ate that day. Story 4. Yellow tomato sauce. When I was about 8 or 9, mom forgot to order a MCD's plane, so she said it was yellow tomato sauce from the tomatoes like my granddad grew. I moved out at 18 and went shopping for the first time. Wanted to make a real burger. Couldn't find it anywhere. Called mom. 22 years later, she's still laughing. Story 5. My cousins told me that in the Blackpool Tower Kids Play Area, the jungle gym I think it was called, that if you jumped in a specific spot in the ball pool, you'd go through a trap door into a secret room. Spent the whole of the time we were in there on a school trip trying to find it and didn't have time for anything else. Bastards! Story 6. My mom told me that if you fall down a sewer manhole, then you turn into a ninja turtle. I was scared because I did not want to leave home and do ninja turtle stuff and also wanted my body to be human, but now it would be nice to be a ninja turtle because I would not have to deal with life. Story 7. That if you swallowed a watermelon seed, a watermelon would grow inside your stomach. Also, we had a lot of those big black and yellow garden spiders around. They would have these big zigzags of silk down the middle of their web, and I was told they were writing spiders, and if you bothered them, they would write your name and you would die. The zigzag was them practicing their penmanship. Story 8. Told my wife. The channel tunnel has a two-mile middle part, which is see-through so you can watch the fish as you pass through. Completely forgot until about five years later when we used the tunnel and she was gutted. She didn't see any fish. Story 9. When we first started dating, I convinced my then-girlfriend, now wife, who is, in most cases, much, much smarter than I am, that a female pro wrestler had to take a several months long break because she could only afford an implant for one breast and had to save up before getting the other one done. Story 10. The sun doesn't actually heat up the earth. It's actually the earth's molten core that heats us up. So, in sixth grade, I overheard a partial conversation with my teacher and a fellow student. At some point, my teacher said something along the lines of, if the sun is what heats up the earth, why do mountains, which are closer to the sun, keep snow on them for longer than valleys? Now that's the only part of the conversation I remember, and it left me wondering for a very long time, years, I don't remember when I figured it out, about how it is that snow stayed around on mountain peaks for so much longer than everywhere else. They're closer to the sun, and proximity to heat makes things hotter, right? And when you stand on a road in the middle of the summer, you can feel the heat radiating off of it, right? And the hottest place on Earth is Death Valley, which just so happens to be below sea level. So... Obviously, if the sun is what heats up the planet, then the snow should melt faster the closer you are to the heat source, right? And if the Earth has a molten core, clearly that should be radiating heat like mad. And thus, that's what's keeping the Earth warm, not the sun. It didn't sound right, but I didn't know why it didn't sound right. I just lived with this giant question mark in my mind surrounding what is actually warming up the planet. I'm sure there are many reasons why this is obviously wrong, but for a 12-year-old autistic kid, it was the head-scratcher of head-scratchers. Then I learned more about thermodynamics and air density and the fact that it gets warmer during the day, which just so happens to coincide with the sun being out. I don't like talking about it because I'm certain you can get flat earthers to believe it and I don't want that nonsense on my conscience. Story 11. There used to be this website called Peter Answers. It might still be up IDK. And basically, it was like a fortune teller tarot website where the person typing asks Peter a question but if they pressed a special key, they could type an invisible answer so when Peter answers, it's the text that the person typed. All for pranks, targeted to people who didn't know this. So when I was a kid, my friend asked Peter how I would die and it answered, lung cancer. 
I couldn't sleep for a week after and begged my dad to not smoke around me. I felt so stupid when I learned the trick. Story 12. A friend in elementary school convinced me that if you buy everything from the frog coin shop in Super Mario RPG, it unlocks the Swamp Stick, which is the most powerful weapon in the game. A timed hit instantly kills anything it hits. Over 20 years later, beaten the game numerous times, bought out the frog shop, and I'm still convinced this item exists, and I just haven't figured out how to unlock it properly. Story 13. That we were pennies away from being homeless and living on the streets. I think my dad was okay with me believing that because I stopped asking for things. Looking back now, both of my parents smoked, dad drank, and would hang out at the bar all the time. He was also constantly giving his brothers money and buying them groceries and clothes for their kids. My brother used to think chocolate-covered raisins were chocolate-covered ants until he was like 14, but none of us, including him, know why he thought and believed that eve. Story 14. The cartilage that covers the larynx that usually protrudes on men's throats is known as the Adam's apple. My wife convinced me that the more hidden cartilage over women's throats was called the Eve's pear. Never questioned her about it, B.C. She said it so often. One day I said it back to her and she had the biggest laugh I have ever heard. Lasted about ten. 15 minutes. And that was the day I learned that my wife came up with Eve's pair. Story 15. One of my friends told me at my birthday party when I was around 11 that she overheard my parents talking about how I was adopted. I knew it couldn't be true, but I honestly never 100% believed that I wasn't until I had an ancestry test taken as a teenager and it showed my mom as a family member. Story 16. In my case, it was my mother and it was accidental. In about second grade, I watched an old episode of Little Rascals in which one of the kids uses some vanishing cream and disappears. I was skeptical that something like this existed. I did not know that vanishing cream was just another name for skin cream and this was a joke. So I asked my mother if vanishing cream existed. To my surprise, she said yes. This was a revelation. I said, so can we get some? Um, sure, if you want to, she said. As a result of this, I went to school the next day and told my friends I was going to get vanishing cream and disappear, and was embarrassed when I found out the truth. Story 17. My husband convinced me the words to hail to the chief were, Hail to the chief. He's the one we all say hail to. Hail to the chief because he's the chief and we say hail. I believed it for years and then was talking about it to mutual friends and knew it was wrong when I saw the amused looks on their faces. Story 18. Jackalopes and drop bears. I both fear and respect nature, B.C., I sure as hell don't understand what's possible and what's not. Now I doubt that weird, loud, stork shoebill thing is real BC. It looks and sounds unreal. Gullible written all over me when it comes to animals. Story 19. When I was about four or five, my cousins convinced me that the little white marks on fingernails occur whenever you lie. When I was about nine, my dad convinced me that a plastic cross glowed in the dark. I spent a few minutes in a closet trying to see it glow before I realized he tricked me. He was laughing when I exited the closet. He got me years later with his best one. When I came home from school, he was cooking stew on the stove. He asked me if I wanted any. After taking a couple of bites, he said, You can't even tell that it's dog food, huh? I started to spit out until saw my dad start laughing. Story 20. That high fructose corn syrup is bad for you and that it creates all sorts of health issues. The thing is, it is bad for you but not because of itself, but because of the amounts of sugar added to almost any food nowadays. You might as well attack regular table sugar as being bad, but you would be missing the point that it is not the substance itself that's causing so many issues, but the quantity of that substance. Story 21. When I was a kid, I was looking through a family album with my mom. There were some pictures with a giant dinosaur balloon wearing a hijab in a traditional dress. My mom said she was a relative, grandma, I believe. I was so sad that I never got to meet her. Story 22. There is a snail that lives up your nose and it'll bite off your finger if you try and pick it. Older neighbor kid. Edit. I googled it and it's from a Shel Silverstein poem. This has been in my head for 35 years. Story 23. In elementary school, a friend had me believe that if you kept a face like crossing your eyes or sticking out your tongue for too long, it would freeze that way. I was terrified of making faces for a while until I realized it was all a big joke. Story 24. When I was a young kid, my dad was watching a news segment about funding for NASA. They showed an astronaut strapping into some sort of training device against a wall that began rotating him like a clock. He was spinning faster and faster. 
The news overlaid an image of a spinning dollar bill, which then slowed and came to a stop. For adults, it was a visual metaphor for the cost of NASA. For me, it was a demonstration how money is made by spinning people until they turn into money. Story 25. For the longest time, I thought that if you made silly faces and the wind changed, your face would stay that way forever. This led to some very cautious behavior during windy days until I finally learned it was just a way to keep kids from pulling faces. Story 26. Not the dumbest thing someone made me believe, but the dumbest thing I made someone believe. Years ago, I was working as a hostess at a BBQ restaurant, and this girl asked how they made sweet potatoes. I told her that they have to inject them with orange dye that had sugar and salt mixed into it in order to get them to taste that way. I wonder how she is these days. This world is tough. Story 27 I'm allergic to dogs. When I was little, my dad told me that in the olden days, rib restaurants, as in restaurants specializing in ribs, instead of napkins, had dogs under the table you would wipe your hands on. I don't know when I finally thought it may have been a joke, but I was over 40 when I finally called him on it. His answer was that he must have had a couple martinis that night. Bravo, Dad. You got me. Story 28. When I was a kid, we had this brush in the car, the kind for getting snow off the windows in the winter, and I asked my mom what it was. She told me it was an elephant toothbrush and that we used to have an elephant. For her, that was just a silly joke, but my six-year-old brain never questioned the fact that we used to own an elephant. A few years later, I must have been more like nine. I brought it up to my mom. Something about it didn't make sense. How did we feed this thing? Where did we keep it? How did we afford an elephant? Where did it come from? What did we do with it in the winter? My mom had entirely forgot she ever told me that and never realized I had been left to believe we owned an elephant. LOL. Story 29. When I was about 10 or 11, my mom was making milkshakes. And to make chocolate shakes, she used chocolate ice cream and white milk and Nestle Quick Powder. I asked her why we don't make chocolate shakes with chocolate milk and chocolate ice cream. She was clearly busy and distracted and said something like, we just don't, by which I've realized she meant, we don't buy chocolate milk. So I thought that meant one shouldn't, but she was busy, so I went and asked my dad, why can't you make chocolate shakes with chocolate milk and chocolate ice cream? He answered, because they blow up, which I believed, right up until that experiment in seventh grade science with vinegar and baking soda. Oh, that must be like what happens when you mix chocolate milk and chocolate ice cream. Story 30. My wife and I were on our first vacation together many years ago. It was a place I have visited yearly since I was a child, and it was her first time. We were taking a walk and went by a large live oak tree that had a long hollow branch hanging over the sidewalk. There was a large hole in the branch, and she stuck her face right near it, to which I exclaimed, Don't get too close, that's the den of a Georgia tree wolf! Quite startled. She jumped back like she was being attacked by invisible bees. She believed in the wolf for a couple more hours until I couldn't keep a straight face anymore. Story 31. I grew up in a small kind of rural town. The only restaurants we really had nearby were chain restaurants. For every occasion, birthdays, graduations, etc., my whole family would go to Olive Garden. My mother always made us dress up very nicely for it. Jeans were not allowed. After growing up and moving out of that town, I had a friend show me a meme that said something like, we all have that friend who thinks Olive Garden is a fancy Italian restaurant. I was like, is it not? I called my mother and asked her, and she laughed and said the only reason she made us get fancy for it was because my great-grandmother would be there and she wanted us to look good and proper. I had no idea. I went to OG a while later and noticed everyone was in jeans and casual clothing. I was floored. Story 32. My father used to have a turbo button in his car that he'd pressed to make the car go faster. Dumbass kid, me didn't know it was the AC button, so when the air would hit my face while seeing the car move, I thought we were flying. Coolest shit ever until I grew older and realized LOL.